Part five. Five alive. Air five. I'm Jason. This is Build Apps Without Code. If you're non-technical and you think you can't build apps because you can't code, this is false. You can. This is part five of this Airbnb clone that we've been working on in Bubble Without Code. Has anyone actually gone through all five videos? I doubt it, but if this is you and you have, put Air 5 in the comments. I want to hear it. You are a true hero. Some of the features we worked on in part four were the ability to write a private and public review for a property or stay. So over here, we made this new review reusable element pop up and we have our star ratings. We have our private and public review and our submit button. Um, so we, yeah, we also worked on the ability to give one to five stars on these different attributes of the property. Uh, so what are we doing today? We're gonna work on giving the user the ability to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the property. We wanna be able to see the reviews publicly when we're looking at the property. Over here on our boathouse, if we scroll down to reviews, Here's a couple wonderful reviews here. Uh, so we want to create the same functionality on our app. Uh, we also want to create a average score for our attributes here. Cleanliness, communication, check-in, accuracy, location, and value. What is the average score? And finally today, we want to work on this number right here. Make sure that that's going up and down as new reviews come in. Make sure that it's calculating correctly and the number of reviews. All right, first thing, thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm just gonna use a bubble icon for this. If you go to visual elements, icon, I'm gonna put one right here. Bunch of built-in icons. There's thumbs down right here. And I'm just gonna make this gray and a little bit transparent so that it looks a little bit lighter. I'm going to copy that. Change it to thumbs up. Cool, so how do we make these um, thumbs clickable? Well, we're gonna use a custom state. Custom state is a way to store data on the screen without actually putting it into your database. So I'm gonna put it inside our main group section here. And we click on this little eye we can add custom states. So I'm gonna call this thumbs. Now we could make it yes, no, because it's either thumbs up or thumbs down, but there is a third option, which is null or like no selection or blank. Um, so I'm just gonna use text in this case. So we have that state thumbs default value will just be blank. What we want to do is when you click on the icon, it's going to set that custom state to either thumbs down or thumbs up or yes or no. Start edit workflow on the thumbs down. The action we're going to use is set state of an element. The element is where we put that custom state, which was on that group properties group. The custom state is thumbs and the value. Um, when you click thumbs down, we're just going to make the value go down. Thumbs down. All right. Now I want to do the same thing, but for the thumbs up. This is thumbs up. Start at workflow. Just actually going to go in here, right click. Copy, right click, paste, change the value to up. Okay, so that value now is stored on screen when these thumbs are clicked. Now we wanna set a condition where if you click the thumb, it changes color a little bit so you know like which one you selected. So if I open up this thumbs down I can go into my conditional settings here, 
choose my custom state. So when group properties thumbs is down, and I'm just going to make it a little darker gray by removing this. Okay, and we'll do the same thing on up. I can right click this, copy expression, go to up, conditional, right click paste. But again, this we're going to change to up. And we'll do the same thing, icon color, make it a little darker. Let's try that out. Okay, so leaving a review. Here's our thumbs up and thumbs down. If I click thumbs down, oh, see that? Did you see it? Did you see it? Did you see it? see it? Let me show you one more thing. I'm going to display that value on the screen. We're going to we'll take it out after just so we can see what it's doing. Um, group properties, thumbs. Let's just display the value up and down. Up, down. Up, down. Up, down. So it's working. Good. Now, we want to, um, when you create the review, actually store that value. So on submit review, we already set up a workflow here last time, but we're going to add to it. Um, we're creating a new thing or a new review with all these different fields, but we're going to add one more field. is recommended and it's going to be an issue here because if we get our thumbs value here this is we set this up as text down and up but um, this field only accepts boolean values yes or no so we need to do maybe one more custom state here just to get the correct value for this field One more custom state for is recommended. Yes, and we'll we'll uh, we'll make this a yes no field, and we'll just uh, do one more state here. So is recommended. We'll say is no. Four thumbs down, and is recommended. We'll say is yes. Um, so back on submit button. Now we can say we want to use our is recommended field there we go or, or is recommended state super cupa can get kind of chilly at night extra blankets are on site that rhymed hmm -hmm. yes submit now back in our data app data reviews here's our review and we can see that is recommended is yes moving on let's go to our property page so we just submitted that review but if we look um here we don't see reviews on salty blue 2 anywhere we gotta set those up so we need a repeating group and that's gonna allow us to show all the reviews for this property so we'll throw it in here. I want to leave a little bit of space because we're going to put in the average star ratings above it later. The type of content here will be reviews. Data, uh, data source will be do a search for reviews. And we only want to show reviews for this property that we're looking at, not every review in the database. So we're going to add a constraint. Property is equal to this parent group's property. Cool. Now we want a little bit of a different layout because uh, look over here. There's two columns here of reviews and three rows. Could probably do something similar. Three rows, two columns. So let's grab a group object. Throw that in here with a little bit of padding. So we'll set the type of content on that group there, which would be 
reviews and the data source is going to be the current cells reviews. We're going to throw a text object in here and show the public review. So here I want the parent groups reviews, public review. There it is, super cute, but a little chilly. Um, we also want maybe the username and the date that the review is posted. This should be good. Okay, so we added the creator, the date it was posted. We could take out the time, I don't think that's necessary. And the review. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of styling. The date maybe can be a little smaller. Uh, we wanna format it first of all. So if I say here, formatted as like a short date, that's fine with me. And the style. That looks a little nicer. All right, let's add a couple more in so we can uh, fill this up. All right, I put in a couple positive ones. Let's put in one negative one. One thing I just noticed here, this pop-up, when you click submit, I want it to close. So let's just fix that. This was our property page. Um, nope, nope, this is our new review re reusable element. Uh, so when submit was clicked, we want to show an element. Actually, no, we want to hide an element. What am I saying? Hide an element. And it's the, there it is right at the top. Cool. So next thing we want to do is add those uh, star ratings right above the reviews here. So kind of like on Airbnb, um, these right here. So we want to actually calculate those ratings and put them on the screen. So we're going to need new fields at the property level to hold these average values. So if we go to back to data, in our reviews, uh, data types, in our reviews table, we have accuracy rating, check-in rating, cleanliness rating. We're gonna need those at the property level as well. So we'll create a couple new fields here. That's done, so we have our cleanliness rating, communication rating, location, value, accuracy check-in uh, at the property level as well. So now that they're in the table, we can populate those values. So we think about when does this number get calculated? And I think it's when a new review comes in. As soon as a new review comes in, Maybe it recalculates. So it could be on the submit button back on our reusable element. So we'll do it there. So back over here on submit review, we'll take a look at this workflow again. So we created a new review here in step one. We hid the element. Now I want to make changes to a thing. So I want to make changes to those fields that we just put on the properties table. So thing to change is the parent group's property. And then we can add the fields that we want to change in. So start with accuracy rating. Now we're going to do a search for reviews for this property. So where the property is equal to this property. And there's an option here for each item's accuracy rating. That's what we're gonna check here. So it's gonna go through every accuracy rating for reviews for this property. And we wanna do an average. So you can sum them up, you get a random one, get the first one, do a bunch of different stuff. We want an average. And we're gonna to have to do that for every field. 
So hold tight one minute. Okay, so we're getting an average for all six of these. And there's one more thing I want to do here actually. We added a field before to the properties table called reviews, and that was like a count of the number of reviews for this property. But we never built any logic to actually count that number. We could do that now. Um, so the field, here it is, number of reviews. We want to do a search again for reviews, again where the property is equal to this property. But instead of getting an average, now we're going to count, which is just count how many there are. So that'll make that field a little more dynamic. That logic was on the submit review button, so we have to leave a new review. And maybe we'll do a, a mix. So now in our data, app data, um, properties, let's look at salty blue. And here's the um, logic we just built. Cleanliness rating, so the average is 3.6. Communication, the average is 3.8. Check-in rating, the average is 3.6. And number of reviews is five. And if we go back to Salty Blue, one, two, three, four, five. There's our number of reviews. Um, so now we're going to actually show those star ratings on the screen here. That's the last thing we want to do. Uh, we also want to actually update this overall rating as well. Heading back to property page. So I left a little space for this functionality here. Um, so let's throw in a group. So I'm going to grab another star rating element and remember we added a plugin so we can get this and we used it in the last video. Um, this time we're not going to make it editable so it's just going to be like a read only type thing where you can just see what the star rating is. So how do I do that? There's this option here enable auto binding on parent elements thing and which field is it bound to? Um, we'll start with cleanliness I think that was the first one, yeah, cleanliness right here. So we'll start with that. Um, we'll make it a little bit smaller. Okay, we'll just throw a text object there to use as a caption. And now we have stars. So let's just do that for the rest and style it a bit and I will be right back. Uh, one thing here is I don't want these to change as you move your mouse over them. This input is disabled. That should fix that. Last thing we want to do is put this nice label at the top right above. Uh, so we want the overall rating and the number of reviews. We did something similar up here, except well, that's the price. Here we have number of reviews and the rating. So let's grab the star. We'll just do a little copy paste, make a touch bigger. That looks good, so let's make this number dynamic. So back on our submit review button, we want to also make changes to the property field rating. That's, that was like our overall rating field. Now how do we, how do, we do this calculation? Um, we could probably take the average of all six of these sum them all up and divide by six. That might be the best way to do it. I don't know how Airbnb does it, but we'll do it that way. So let's let's add all these numbers up, put it in a, put it in a custom state, store it there, and then we can do a calculation to divide it by six. So I'm gonna um, set the state of a new custom state. We'll call it Star rating summed. And the value, we're going to get the parent group's properties accuracy rating 
plus parent group properties check in rating plus okay so we added all those values up put them in this state we're going to make changes to a, the property thing again this time choosing our rating field we're going to take the custom state that we just made which was star rating summed and we're going to divide by six that's going to be our value so let's try one more review make sure that works and we'll also keep an eye on these stars and make sure that they update when we put in our new review so we'll give straight fives and see if we uh push some of these um, into the fifth star. The averages went up just a little bit, so that did work well. Um, let's just update this number. That looks correct though, 3.8. We just want to format it to be two decimal places. Six reviews is good. It also updates up here because it's bound to the same field. Again, we just need to format that number. So when we show the rating here, click more, format it as number, decimal places to and there you go. We're going to stop here. Don't forget in the last video I mentioned I created a public Notion document with all of the data types fields and field types that we have used so far. Um, I'm going to update it so that it has all the new ones that we just did today and if you already have it it's a live document so it'll automatically update for you. You don't need to download it. You don't need to download it again. Just go to www.buildappswithoutcode.com slash Airbnb clone. I appreciate you watching. If you like the video, please subscribe. If you like this series, please subscribe. If you watch through the entire series, let me know in the comments because you are awesome. Don't forget, you can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Just practice a little bit every day, stay consistent. You're gonna be a pro bubbler in no time. I promise you, you got this. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Peace.